and welcome to the banks of the Bronx River. I'm Adrian Sass for NYC Parks. And, and I'm Michelle Lupke, the Ecology Director for the Bronx River Alliance. We're here for a very exciting event. Some herring are arriving in 400. a truck. 400 herring from Connecticut are visiting the Bronx today and they will make the Bronx River their new home. Michelle, what is this all about? Oh, it's really exciting. So alewife herring are, um, alewives and, rip, and blueback herring are two species of migratory fish that right, live in it. the Bronx River. And because we have all these dams, they don't always come up this far. But we put a fish ladder on and just a couple of days ago, we had three herring come up the fish ladder. So we're really excited that that works. So today what we're doing is there's a big truck. Let's turn the camera around. Yeah. So it's going to go super fast, but what's really exciting is they are about to have babies. They're going to remember that the Bronx River, that this spot of the Bronx River is their home, and then in three to four years when it's time for them to have babies, they're going to come back. Fishies don't even know how popular they so are. So here's what's going to happen. The hose is going to come down here, so um, that camera is good, but I don't... We, we can't have any more encroachment in here. Um, we're going to have to let us set up the hose first, and then we can bring more people around and, and try to get more people to see it. But for right now, we need this workspace. Yep. The thing about alewife, which is a type of herring, is that they are a migratory species that once flourished here on the Bronx River. And for the last decade or so, the Parks Department, in partnership with the Bronx River Alliance and the Wildlife Conservation Society, and many, many, many citizens of the Bronx and scientists from local universities have been working to restore the ecology here and make this the pristine habitat that it once was before industry came to the Bronx. Along the river in the 19th century, many dams were built, which made the river difficult for fish to travel through and reach their native spawning grounds. Mm -hmm. Danielle, who's the ecology director for, Michelle, who's the ecology director for the Bronx River Alliance, can tell us more about the patterns of these herring. Yeah. So we have a bunch of migra uh, migratory fish in the Bronx River, and so that's kind of exciting. We sometimes have talked about American eels, and eels are opposite of alewife herring. Um, they spend most of their life in the freshwater and then go out to the ocean to have their babies. Alewife are just the opposite. They're kind of like salmon. They spend most of their lives out in the ocean and then they come up the freshwater to have their babies. And so that's why we're so excited to have them here because they're going to think that this part is their home. So all the new ones won't remember that they're from Connecticut. Now they're going to be residents of the Bronx. And so they will come back here and it's it's not only shows that the water quality is improving and the habitat quality is improving from all of the restoration that we've been doing, but it's also that all of our ecosystem is coming back. So it's not just that one thing is good, it's that everything makes it better so that these alewife, when they get here, will have a really happy new home, a very hospitable new place to live. We and should catch this. Here they are setting up the the uh, slip and slide. Slip and slide. Where do the alewife go when they travel down the street? They live the and that's where they get plenty of food and lots of new things. Uh, plenty of food, and plus they they're away from predators, so they can survive a lot longer. So that's. That's why we're so interested in alewives. Plus, they were a major part of our ecosystem back in the day. The Lenape used it for a food source. Um, and then also the early settlers used a lot of the overabundance of alewife for their agricultural purposes. They actually used them as like a compost. Um, and that helped make the soil richer so that they could grow agricultural products and food products and things and have a, have a more ver varied diet that the settlers were used to. And so it, that tells us that there were a lot more alewife 
in history. But through damming and habitat loss and water quality degradation, we're really seeing the population decline. But because of the work of parks and the Bronx River Alliance, it's it's come a better place. All right. They're starting to um, affix the flip and slide uh, to the tank. These fish came from Connecticut. Um, they were uh, caught in a brook. Um, but they could have a lot more. <laughs> so that's why they came And that's why they brought everyone who's tuning in, we are getting ready to release 400 alewives, a type of herring species, into the Bronx River. They have come all the way from Connecticut, um, but they are a species that once flourished here on the Bronx River, and they're a migratory species. They are a type of fish that um, spawns in fresh water, but lives in salt water like the ocean. So the Bronx River here, which cuts right through the center of the Bronx, is a perfect um, sort of corridor for them to make that transition from salt water to fresh water. The problem is that many dams were built in the Bronx River in the last century, and that pathway was sort of disrupted. The Bronx River Alliance and the Parks Department and our partners at the Bronx Zoo have been working um, to restore clear passage for the herring and we have fish ladders downriver from here that help the fish come to this freshwater area which is where they um, need to spawn. Yes. The, um, that special word for fish that live most of their life in the ocean and spawn in the freshwater is called diadromous. Diadromous. Well, that's actually, that's both, but they're actually considered anadromous. So that's, that's the specific one. Oh my goodness. Uh, you can't see like or hear us. Let's arrange it right here so that everybody can come close. As I come with a net, I'm not going to last long, but I'm going to have it here so you can take a look at it, and I won't yes. forget you people on this side either. Ready? Look, 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 look. So here's the first of the LYs. All silvery. They're all about the same size. You can't tell the boys from the girls. Um, and uh, these will be the first. All right, we got to yes. get them in the water. Yay. Woo. Those are the first of the fish. Um, about 400 more are going to follow. I want you to count them as they go out. You will. <laughs> We're going to count every single one, Steve. Dave, are we ready? We are ready. Let me get into position. No, I'm going to stay live. And okay, here we go. Ahí va. 
Wow. <laughs> All right, we tried to go to the underwater cam, but Biff B doesn't come. So now through. He's, there's a last few in there. He's sort of pushing them out with the last oh. bit of water. Oh, there they go. Look at them all. Yay! Welcome to your new home. Welcome to the Bronx. Oh, there's still some more wiggling. Oh, they're, they're all disoriented. They, they will mill around here for a while and eventually they'll head up upstream a bit until they get to the next dam and then they'll start spawning. They may not spawn for a few days though because, uh, you know, this whole uh, car, truck trip sort of disoriented them and they'll, the temperature may be a little different. They may take them a few days to acclimate. But the fish are now going to make their home here and hopefully spawn and return when? Uh, in a few years, probably three to four years, but they're going to spawn probably in the next couple of months. And we are going to now do a mortality survey to see how many survived the trucking. Um, and then for through over the next few days, we're going to keep doing some more surveys to see how many survive, and hopefully most of them. And then we will bid them a fond adieu. And then a lot of planning, a lot of upfront effort, but the release of the fish is sort of anticlimactic. They go all at once, and now they're gone. <laughs> Um, can you talk a little bit about the Bronx River Alliance and sure. um, you know maybe the scientists and the educators yes. and the everyone who works there and what what you do? Yeah. So the Bronx River is actually 24 miles long. It starts up at the Kensico Dam and it flows through most of Westchester. Two thirds of the river is actually in Westchester. And the bottom eight miles is down in the Bronx here. The bottom three miles is estuary. And estuary is a really great uh, term for those of you who don't know it. It's where fresh water and ocean water mix. And so it becomes brackish water, somewhere between fresh and salt water. And that has a whole different host of species that live there. And then the fresh water has some species that could only live in fresh. So here at the Bronx River Alliance, we are the coordinated voice that really speaks for the river, the community members that live next to the river, the wildlife that can't speak for themselves, including a, a poor duck that we saw with a bottle cap on his bill today. So we do things like that. We have a program called Project Waste, where we're looking at the trash that comes into the river, finding out what kind it is, where it comes from, if we can stop it at its source so that it doesn't come into the the river and pollute. Um, we have an education program that we teach kids. We get them down doing water quality monitoring and eel monitoring, and we'll have them doing herring monitoring. And then we also have a recreation program where we take people out on the river, teach them how to paddle a canoe and a kayak. We have a really robust outreach program and a greenway program that that is encouraging people to get out and run or bike up the pathway that runs up the whole river. And then I'm the ecology director, so I'm a little biased. I like science. Um, and so we do a lot of stuff. Not only are we doing things that support the fish, but we also are supporting the riparian vegetation. So riparian is another $10 word. It's the vegetation that's on the side of a river. And so that's the places that get flooded pretty frequently. And so that's also a special kind of vegetation. So we're really interested in restoring that. We're actually standing in the only remaining old growth forest in the New York City area. So this is what the area would have looked like before people came in and built things and built all the big tall buildings and things. So the Bronx Zoo and the Botanical Garden and then the Bronx Forest are all part of that big green area. So if you ever look on your New York City map and you see that big chunk of green in the center that the 2-5 line runs up, that is the oldest remaining forest in New York City. And so that's really what we work on. We want people to love the river and love this area as much as we do. Fantastic. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing with us and Thank telling you. us all about what goes on on the Bronx River. Thanks for coming out and seeing our big, exciting fish release.